He abused me on a regular basis. You were always wondering what sort of mood he's in. Is he coming into the room? Am I his little girl today? There was no talk about going to the police. This was their way of dealing with it. The general attitude towards me when I walked into the room was just one of derision. You just get treated like a liar. And the two-person rule is the biggest problem in that. They take your childhood and those few years with so much. I hope they can live with what they've done. I hope they can live with it like I have to. You grow up with a lot of guilt because Jehovah's always watching you. He knows what's in your heart, what's in your mind. We didn't have any worldly friends outside the religion because that's Satan's world, so we only associated with children in the religion. The day that my mother married Owen, that night I started wetting the bed. So I knew, I knew what was coming. He abused me on a regular basis. And that would be anywhere on his bed studying the great teacher book, this pink book that I remember very vividly. And he would have that propped up with a pillow and... On one occasion, he went to the bathroom and I was just lying there with no pants on. And mum walked in and said, what are you doing? And I said he would, was doing that, and she just said, get your pants on and go to your room. And it was dark when, when Mum came back into the room. All she said was, if you can forgive him, so can I. And that's all she said. Never talked on about again. We got up the next day as if nothing happened. It wasn't long after that that we went to a meeting and it was announced at the meeting that Owen was no longer a ministerial servant, which is just a step down from being an elder. Nobody knew why. We just assumed that, okay, mum went to the elders. Um, and that's his punishment. You know, we slap on the hand and he's no longer got privileges. Before he married mum, he was convicted of a similar offence against young girls and disfellowshipped out of the religion. The elders knew but they didn't inform Mum with two young girls who he was and what he was about and what he did and his conviction. My father was born and raised as a Jehovah's Witness. I got baptised when I was 16. As far as choices go, it was pretty much expected. My dad was an elder, that's what he did. This new family moved into the congregation and I'd been babysitting for them for a few months. One of the nights they were getting ready to go and the husband announced that he was sick, but he still needed me there to look after his daughter. So um, very reluctantly his wife left and got to about midnight and he came out of his bedroom and he had a stack of porn magazines. He kept talking about how he could show me how to reach orgasm. Everything about the situation at the time screamed, I shouldn't be here and this is wrong, but there was nowhere to go. There was a sister in the congregation that I was very close to. We were just chatting in the car and I told her. About a week afterwards, that's when Dad and me were called to a meeting at the man's house. Once I gave my story, I realised that I wasn't being believed. They basically sat there and said, well, it's her word against his, and she has a reputation of being a skanky little hoe, basically, so we're not gonna believe her. Um, she has to prove it, it's just her word. You need two witnesses. The general attitude towards me when I walked into the room was just one of derision. You just get treated like a liar and the two-person rule is the biggest problem in that. But that's what their religion says is protocol. It's biblical, it's in the scriptures. When the elder that was with me and Dad brought up getting the police involved, it was 
no way they wanted that. They were basically, well, you haven't proven anything. And that was when the elder brought out the other girls' statements. They told me there were other girls and that bad things had happened to them, but of course they didn't divulge the details to me. But I knew there was enough um, that the elder and my dad were quite horrified by it and the fact that it had been hidden and unreported and that he'd been allowed to come into our congregation and no one had been warned, basically, you know. If an allegation of um, child sexual abuse was made, what would happen is two elders would be selected from the body to investigate the matter. There would most likely be in a case of child sexual abuse, and they go to the perpetrator and they ask him, did this happen? And he flatly refuses it and says, no way. Then they don't have two witnesses. So they would go back to the victim and they would say, well, did anybody else see this happen? Of course, no. It never happens in public. It's always hidden. And the paedophiles make sure of that. So they would say, well, we don't have our two witnesses, so there's nothing we can do. Even if the person is disfellowshipped, because maybe they had a history or a practice of such behaviour, the congregation is only told a simple statement, Joe Bloggs is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. They are not told why. Other elders within the body of elders, apart from those three that were in the Judicial Committee, might not know why. Certainly the vast majority of the congregation will not know why. They will just know that he's either been reproved or he's been disfellowshipped. They have had this policy for a long, long time and there seems to be a reluctance uh, in the governing body to accept that there is a problem. But leaders did know about some of the men, but apparently never informed authorities. They admitted that there was over 23,000 known pedophiles in the USA. They know that there's 1,006 recorded by their own branch in Australia. Things changed for me when I was about eight or nine, and my uncle and auntie came and stayed and lived with us. We offered them the flat at the back of our house to stay in. My uncle, Alan, he sexually abused me over that time that they were living with us. And then that carried on once they got their own place. Um, he would try and get me over to babysit. When we would go away on conventions, the families would combine a holiday house and we would all chip in and stay together and that was another opportunity for him to do things. From my recollections, there was a meeting um, held within the congregation between the elders in my congregation and the elders in my uncle's congregation. He admitted to doing it, and then there was a judicial committee. There were two elders that attended with me, and there were two elders that had attended with him. He was in the room at the time, um, and I basically had to say everything that happened in front of four men and my abuser. He had admitted to it, so I, I knew that I was doing the right thing. But there was the comments made that I was more mature than what I seemed at the age of nine or 10, and felt like maybe I was drawing attention to myself, and that's why he was persuaded in doing what he was doing. I was offered a type of counselling which consisted of extra Bible studies for me to help me to get through. There was no talk about going to the police. This was their way of dealing with it. He was disfellowshipped, which meant that that was announced, I believe, the following week. There was no public reproof apart from him being disfellowshipped. They don't go into why. So after some time, um, he was reinstated back into the religion, back as, as if nothing had happened. Jehovah's Witnesses tend to have lots of potluck dinners, games, evenings, um, everybody's involved. There's always something going on. So often myself and a couple of close friends will be babysat by 
older teenagers. And for myself, from the age of five to eight, I was sexually abused by one of these babysitters. He was a close family friend. He would have been maybe 19 at the time. Trusted, obviously. My mum went to the elders. I was pulled aside um, with the congregation, was immediately taken into another room. I had nobody, just me and these four elders. And I remember being absolutely petrified. I remember them clarifying that they knew what he'd done to me. And they got off on questioning me about what had happened. So they would ask me questions like, was it hard? How he felt? So very interested in if I enjoyed it. It's the main thing. Really uneasy questions that I don't think any 12 year old girl needs to be asked. And I personally think they got off on it. There was no mention of the police or glass, you know, volunteers to the police, nothing at all. I was offered no support, absolutely nothing. When I think back to, it's not just your abuse you deal with from the age of five to eight, it's also the elders. You know, that was pretty, pretty traumatic when so were asking. morning watch how can I help you my name is Amy Parsons King and I'm a journalist from New Zealand I'm doing a story on how Jehovah's Witnesses deal with sexual abuse allegations I had sent through a couple of letters I did get a response from the second letter but you didn't answer the questions that I put to you we actually indicated that there is a policy on our position and how we handle child abuse uh, on our website. Yes, that it's scripturally based. Yeah. yeah, and that's basically, Jehovah's Witnesses abide by what the Bible says. Mm. But do you think in the case of sexual abuse of children, it could be changed because there's not witnesses to well, abuse? You have to understand two different views. And I, I'll just make one comment to you, Amy. Any victim of abuse or their family are perfectly entitled uh, to go to the authorities to report any matter. Jehovah's Witnesses will report the matter to the police where that is mandated. That's to handle the crime. The crime of child abuse is handled by the authorities, not Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses don't handle crime, they handle sin. Their guidelines for handling sin is scriptural. It's a, it's a, a Christian concept, it's not a legal concept. Anyway, I'll leave it at that and I hope that at least to put things in perspective, some of those responses may be of assistance. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye Amy. Now. There's been some discussion in forums about uh, pedophiles talking about Jehovah's Witnesses being a pedophile's paradise. It seemed to me at the outset that that was quite outrageous. But then when you actually read the uh, reports of victims and you see how they were told to only trust fellow witnesses. When you are told your whole life that it's God's clean organisation and something terrible happens in it, there's no way you're going to go and report that to the police because they are outside the circle of the clean organisation. They really need to sort their act out, but for some reason... They are resistant to change, and I don't really know why, because it's so obvious that there are problems uh, that are costing them millions and millions of dollars in lawsuits. I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to fix that. Let the congregation be about spiritual things, not handling legal matters and criminal matters, because it's not a sin, it's a crime. I feel like my family have let me down. This abuser is allowed back into the religion, but because I've chosen not to be a part of the religion, I am now being shunned. So that's a victim being shunned. The abuser is being welcomed. He has access to children. There are plenty of children in, in the congregations. There always are. So, you know, he could be sitting next to one right now in one of the meetings. I look back, I think, how do I deal with that? You know, that's 
such a young age and you've lost everything, all your friends and religion, everything's gone and it lives with you forever. You know, it doesn't go away. I think it was the first time as a young Jehovah's Witness that I realised that the organisation is not geared to protect you. The attitude of the elders at the time was quite frankly disgusting. And, um, I mean, I was a teenage girl who was, you know, as we said, you know, there were so many things in our lives that restricted us. Jehovah's Witnesses have enabled Owen, and I would suggest a lot of other men, to continue doing what they're doing. Because there's no consequences. You get a slap on the hand, you just have to sit at the back of the hall for a year. But you're back in, and no one else knows. Owen is still a Jehovah's Witness. I mean, he got out of prison, went back to meetings, and he is a practicing Jehovah's Witness, which means he's attending meetings, he's out witnessing, knocking on people's doors, people with young kiddies. He's actively a witness. Again. <laughs>